So, Samir, hello. I am hello. very, very excited that you are actually part of this. Um, strangely enough, you're the last one um, of this series that I started a couple of uh, weeks ago, more than a couple of weeks ago. Um, the idea behind it, as you might have known or might know, is just to actually meet the past winners of the YDA and talk to them, but more importantly, talk to them as, a, as directors that have a background and you know have gotten to the YDA in a certain way and and also know where uh, there I mean how the YDA actually was there was a before and an after you know in the YDA so you are a winner from 2012 I think right or eight or I, what, whatever I think it was uh, God it was a while ago I think it was like 2010 2010 yeah. so yeah. 10 years away and you're now a director that I would consider one of the best directors in the world. And it actually is amazing that um, uh, you're here talking to me. Uh, wow. so, uh, okay. I don't know about that, but okay, that? sure. How do you like that as an intro? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I guess I'll take it, but thank you. <laughs> Just take it. Just take it. Okay. But so the, 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 the question that I ask when we start this, uh, every time I start this is, what is your background? Meaning, as a kid, did you grow up in a creative family? Was creativity part of your family? Uh, and in general, what does that mean, uh, whether you are in a creative family or not? Because everybody has a different concept of what a creative family is and what creativity being instilled in a kid means. Um, what, is, what is your background as a, as a person more than as a director? Yeah, um, so I grew up in in Canada, um, and I was kind of a, a a mix, right? So on the one hand, you've got my Indian parents who've kind of come there to you know live out their American dream, and then you've got us, we're the first generation, and they really, my parents were kind of traditional in some ways, but also pretty much very liberal, and so. They didn't, for instance, raise us with religion. Actually, one of them was Hindu and one of them was Muslim. So basically, they were like, fuck religion. We're not going to do that part. Uh, and they also, you know, they really wanted us to be Canadian, whatever yeah. that meant to them. So, for instance, they didn't really teach us Hindi, uh -huh. right? Yep. And I didn't even eat Indian food till I was like 10. Oh, really? Because, no, because, yeah, I know, I know. I mean, it's, it's crazy, but um, because I was like, ew, that's gross. I, so I had this thing about being Indian, but at the same time, um, you know, I was all, you know, attracted to it in some way. And, and I was living in a very white place. I grew up in Ottawa. So at the time it was very kind of what? a white milieu. I was one of the few people of color. Yeah. So, you know, what, what that did for me is it sort of made me a kind of an insider outsider you know, where I always felt like I was kind of there, but also a bit of an imposter. Yeah. Because on the one hand, I couldn't connect completely to the Indian culture because I didn't speak the language. And on the other hand, I felt, you know, sort of an outsider um, in, in, you know, in, in my school environment and got called, you know, racial slurs sometimes and that sort of stuff. Um, so, but that's a really good perspective yeah for a story for a storyteller yeah right? it's true i mean it, it basically is what you do of, that's already drama right like there's a little bit of drama in that right it's like exactly the, and exactly and that's already like a perspective if you think about a story often there is this perspective like uh, michael corleone for instance yes, yes. right it's it's or you know so it, it's a great perspective on 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 a way to 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 tell a story so yeah. i think that that was that was how I sort of grew up. And, um, you know, often, for instance, we'd be driving and, you know, my parents, of course, were, would be smoking in the car. We're talking about the 80s, uh, you know, smoking, smoking, smoking. It's like, OK, open the fucking window, which we couldn't do because it was too cold because it was Ottawa. Because of Ottawa. Um, yeah. <laughs> in Ottawa, yeah, driving from Ottawa to Montreal because my mother had uh, she sold security systems and she, she her territory was also Montreal. So we would go there frequently. And they would be talking, talking, talking in Hindi, but I didn't understand what the hell they were talking about. So I would kind of daydream out the window. Yes. And, and I think that's partly how I developed my, my sense of creativity. Now, 
to be fair, my parents recognized that very early. Both of them were creative, but both of them, you know, sort of got told you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. So they very much encouraged me to to be creative from day one. I mean, when I was four or five, I would be writing songs That's on crazy. my father's dictaphone. Um, then I started doing plays. You know, I did like, uh, you know, uh, Macbeth or whatever the kids' version of it. At, 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 with I was the narrator in Macbeth. Put it that yeah. way. Um, and. Uh, they put me in drama classes. They never were like, you can't do that. It's not a real thing. They were basically like, you can do this. Can do because this. I, my, well, I was lucky because my sister was the smart one. Yeah, but so, that, that, that was my question. When you say we, uh, how, yes. how many brothers and sisters do you have? So I had one sister and she was like the, the like super smart and got like 95%. So as long as they, like in an Indian family, as long as there's like at least one child. One, who's kind of, one person that is very yeah, talented. Yeah, yeah. As, as long as there's one person who's like the best in the city at math, then the other yeah. one, they're like, oh, well, we still have this one. So like, whatever. <laughs> and then there's the uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> uh, so they so, so they were kind of like they didn't you know they weren't so bothered by my academic performance which as we know I mean in an Indian family is 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 an important Absolutely, thing yeah, I can imagine. Uh, to to make a, a huge sweeping generalization yes. um, that's also true <laughs> um, so you know I I grew up in in that environment and uh, you know. Um, it, it, it definitely shaped me, you know, yeah. um, and, and I, I think that also, you know, my father was like this very charismatic kind of guy who would sort yeah. of tell stories all the time. And yeah. also, you know, we, um, like there was a lot of things that happened in my family that, that were dramatic, yes. right? Um, in my life events as a, as a young child, like especially when I was around 12 or 13, we had like some major, huge life changes and I, I think that also shaped me because I sort of um you, you, I, I I you participated yeah. emotionally yeah. I I did I did yeah yeah no no definitely I mean my you know um it 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 my my father struggled with addiction and yeah. at and, and at a young age I yeah. I learned about what that was yes and and I I so then that's part of my story too okay. so and we even at one point you know my parents um, my parents became quite wealthy in the eighties and then they kind of lost everything. And that's uh, all the drama. <laughs> exactly. And there was a recession. Yeah. So, so that, you know, everything came crashing down. It was like bankruptcy, all that shit. Yeah. And then we ended up, you know, moving to a whole new city, moving to Vancouver. So that was for me, like a kind of a split. It was like, you leave your old life behind and you move. And that, that's what happens in a story, right? Yeah. In a story. Absolutely your home gets fucked up and then you have to go and, and go somewhere else to try to fix it, right? So in, in, all, in all of this, Samir, at a certain point, do, uh, kind of grows in this family and, and drama is something that you actually probably, you know, when you were older, you looked back at it as something that will kind of built, you know, your, your, your background, right? You kind of put everything in the back of your shoulders and you, you kind of learned from it as you were moving along. It, was there a moment in which you actually uh, decided that directing was actually a big deal for you? Because I wanted to be a director when I was a kid. I remember I was 14 years old, and I've said this before in other chats. Um, and I remember the moment. It was kind of a moment in which my two parents who were architects, my grandfather, who was an architect, wanted me to become an architect. And I realized that I wasn't going to be an architect in my life because I loved yeah. that thing that I liked. Was there a moment in which you actually thought that? Did you bump into I'm, it? I mean, I would say, I, I, wouldn't, I don't know if there was a singular moment, but yeah. I would say there was a, a few defining mm -hmm. moments. So I would say that I all, like from day one, I wanted to do something, either act or direct. And so, you know, we had a VHS, I, the whole like VHS camera thing, yeah. I did that, I made little movies and things. Yeah. And then even in high school, I went to like a kind of arts high school um, for acting. But then they recognized that the, that I should be doing something else potentially. So they actually allowed me to direct a play when yes. I was around 16. Yeah. Yeah. So that was another thing, just getting a taste of that. Yes. Of uh, being able to be the maestro and being able to sort of do a little piece of everything. Because 
like that's also why I love directing because like I, I also play music and like I, I, I'm really interested in human behavior and I'm really interested in technical aspects of how we how we visualize things how we hear things and and how that connects to perception so you know yeah. you, there's there's a lot of different things that you can touch on yeah um so I, I, you know, I was interested in all of these things. I, I did, you know, I was obviously like everybody else I was kind of like, hey, what am I going to do? Is this a real career? I don't know. Um, and, you know, my mother sort of encouraged me going to communications because, yeah. you know, my parents are still Indian. They didn't want me to like go to like film school. And I, I didn't particularly want to go to film school either. Yeah. Um, I wanted a more broader education. Yeah. So I, um, I went to do communications. And then when I got out of that, I got an internship at the film board of Canada Yes. Um, back in, you know, like a long time ago, like yes. turn of the century sort of time. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, this was for, you know, in, this is what, like what people are talking about now they were doing back then, which is like, yeah. let's have an internship only for, you know, people of color. And, and, and so I got one of those internships and then, you know, I, I was supposed to be sort of like, I don't know, doing some bullshit on some diversity database or something. But um, there was a riot at my university uh, between pro-Palestinian, pro-Israeli students. And I knew one of the guys involved. I went down, I started filming. And then basically the head of the film board, eventually he kind of heard that I was skipping out on my internship and was doing this thing. Yes. And he just said, look, forget about your internship just we're going to make you a director and that's how I became wow. a director. Wow. Uh, and that, yeah, I, I mean, it was, it was amazing. And so then I, and at that point I was like, I'm not meant to be, you know, in an office. Yep. I've never, I've never had a real job actually. I've never actually had a nine to five job. I, I've done sales. I've done all sorts of shit, but I've never just sat at a desk. So he, you know, I got that opportunity and, and after, since then I've been a director. It's funny because I, uh, you know, one of the reasons I gave my parents uh, that I didn't want to be an architect is that I didn't want to sit at a, you had a, a they were called technographs uh, at the time, you know, like to, to actually sit and draw things as much as I actually liked it. I mean, I actually liked, enjoyed the idea of creating something for other people to live in. Um, and I might even have been good at it. I didn't like the, 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 the claustrophobia of sitting at a table for a long time and kind of like looking at a monitor. And I love our job because of that, because it kind of takes us places and makes us think of different things. And it is very similar to architecture. I always say that to my parents, it's like, I'm actually building things that people have to like or cry for or laugh at. Yes. <clears throat> so. Also it's the psychology of space too, absolutely. right? Because we, because we kind of absolutely. create a space yep. and architecture is the same. You, when you walk into, when you're in, absolutely. when you're in a scene, when you walk into a space, right? It's very fascinating. No. Because you have to you have to understand a lot of things through the space that you're creating, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you have to live it. And you're creating a feel. You're creating a feeling. I mean, a film a film is kind of like a building. It, it's a structure. Yep. And you're creating a sort of a feeling. You want somebody to feel the same way when you walk into a certain you know specific room. Yeah. Like if you go to Sagrada da Familia, you know Absolutely. when you walk in there, it's yep. it's it's insane, right? It, it feels like being in a movie. Yeah, the feelings, all the different feelings you get, right? And, and and I love the emotionality of architecture, right? Which is what yeah. we build, right? You can you walk into uh, a Baha'i temple and it has a feeling, and you walk into a, a, a St. Peter's in in Rome, it has a different feeling, and you walk into a mosque and it has a different feeling, and that is yeah. basically a way to actually make you feel God, right? Uh, or make you feel yeah. religion, which is interesting because. That, as an example, is also true of somebody's house, you know, and, and it's, it's interesting anyway, but, but that's kind of going in a different direction. That said, you become a director and do you, um, have you lived in that world? I mean, you grew up in that world of directors being able to shoot things and, and, and direct it themselves even without having somebody commission it for you, right? I mean, Having gone to shoot the riot, um, did you grow up in a, in, in a world of directing that actually needed to shoot things? I mean, did you feel like you had to create images? Yeah, I mean, you, yes. I mean, I, I, I think I felt it on multiple levels. I mean, I, I've, I've had this strong need to sort of go out and 
tell stories you know i mean i mean it sounds a little pretentious but basically that's true like i have this impulse yeah i'm gonna go i'm gonna go down there and i'm gonna go and interview somebody or yeah i'm gonna go to nigeria and i'm gonna talk to this guy who's made 160 movies or you know i'm gonna go to india Uh, i read about this thing about call centers 2002 Yes. I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's go there, you know. And and I, I I've been lucky to to sort of get people behind me to to help me do that yes. because obviously you need people to support you. Absolutely. I think I was from the first generation of of filmmakers who didn't need a lot of technical knowledge to go out and shoot something. So we're talking about you know three chip PD one hundred and fifty cameras. Yeah. This was the beginning. Of course, the iPhone camera is better than that camera was, you know. But at the time, we still needed to procure the equipment. Um, but we, you know, it it it, it it opened things up because then it's just one person who can go and, and you know, that first movie that I made, which is called Discordia, it's, it's very much a shot from here. It's shot from the hip. And, and it's really cool. I couldn't make that movie today. Right. I couldn't be 40 and going into yep. some university and just hanging out all day and shooting yep. 200 hours of footage. They'd be like, they wouldn't, <laughs> but that right. wouldn't no, work. No, right. Yeah. But, but you, you, you true. I, I wanted to get to that because you are from that first generation that, took advantage of the technology that was yes. making it democratic to become a director, right? The democracy yes. of directing came in more or less when you started taking advantage of it and you take advantage of it probably very instinctively, right? You Yes, yes that, that's it, right. Right? That's yeah. right, that's right. There wasn't that, uh, that distance between yeah. the technology and us, right? And of course that distance just keeps getting shorter and shorter. Absolutely, yeah. And, and yeah, so I, I think I, I see what you're getting at. And, and yes, the, so um, I, I was able to go out and learn on the job and, yeah. and mentor with a specific producer who sort of yeah. guided me at the film board. But yes, and I think that that's so important and that's what I tell everybody to do, you know, um, is that when people ask me, oh, you know, do you think I should go to film school? I said, well, I don't know. Like, it, 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 I would I would suggest going out and, and making stuff. And yeah. if you think the best way to do that is to go to film school, fair enough. Fair enough. But, you know, it's not definitely not the only way. Yeah, and, and, and I always say if you go to film school, then just be conscious of the fact that film school allows you to create stuff. I mean, don't come out of film school thinking that you have to be commissioned to do something. You're, you have to want to do something. You do. You want to tell a story or you want to look at a, a beautiful image. You want to create one. You want to experiment something. I think the idea of, when I wanted to become a director, right, there was no way I could be a director. No way. Because VHS right. sucked and, and, and film was professional. Now, professional and, and non-professional, let's put it that way, are almost overlapping. They have overlapped yeah. by quality. I'm not saying that you can shoot everything on the phone, but you know what I mean, right? And I think going out and creating things today is actually very interesting. And the YDA has always been at the forefront of that, which is actually very interesting to me because we actually just finished judging and we saw amazing work by amazing young talent, some of them still in school, which is again, also amazing, right? When I was, I, 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 I looked at the things that the film students did and I said this year, and I said, I wanna go back to film school. Like if, if, if this is what comes out of film school, I want to go back to film school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the quality of work for some of these younger guys that have come out, these 25 year olds, yep. it's, it's highly impressive. And what is, I think for me impressive is, you know, there's this whole return to film. Also, just the patience and the, I'm thinking, I think of this guy, um, Jared Neck, you know, he's so, such a young kid. I think he won the YDA something as well. Yep. And I was just so impressed, like, the, 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 you know, stuff that I feel like I took me a long time to sort of yeah. learn and to get to, yeah. um, you know, because I was from that sort of doc style, uh, style basically, yeah. right. Where you're bringing that more sort of found thing, you know, and that's how I got my first commercial. Yes. Um, after I made three documentaries, um, you know, I, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. I was like back at home, no money. Like, um, I had this TV series that we were trying to do, but it, they wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. And uh, basically having a sort of career crisis. And um, then, you know, I got this opportunity 
where they wanted a documentary director. They didn't want somebody from commercials. Yep. So it was me and a, and a, and a really, you know, well-known commercials guy. I'd never done a com- treatment before. Yeah. And, um, you know, it just, uh, I just sort of brought this more doc approach to it. Yep. And, and that ended up being, you know, my first, uh, my first commercial. And that's what, that's what I won for, for Arctic yep. Sun. Yep. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was it was incredible, you know, and because it, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what's incredible. I was on the other side. I ha- didn't know you, and and when when we who were in the business and were looking at talent looked at that film, that was one of the films that I I would probably think, and this we're talking ten years ago, right? Uh, would probably think that showed that there was a demarcation, there was a border between what was before and what was after. If I were to name two or three of the films that actually changed a little bit the, mod- the, the mode in which we would look at films, that Tropicana film is one of them. Because um, we kind of realized that it, it, it was a look and feel that was different. It was docu, but it was cinema. It was emotional, but it was real, right? Uh, which yes, is, yes, exactly. Which is all the words that we use today. Right, you're it's, right. Uh, yeah, no, it's true. It's you're true. right in the and treatment. Of course, <laughs> no, it's 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 so true. And of course, like I, having done that now, I, I'm I'm sort of trying. I, I've been trying for the last few years to go into narrative. Of course, we always want to like do something different and be evolving. Yeah. Um. But uh, but bringing you know some of that intimacy. And uh, I guess for me, it was such. So actually, this is going back to your earlier question because, so after I did that, right? Yeah. I mean, that was a crazy shoot. You know, that was like literally never done any. I've never shot with six people. I didn't know what a gaffer was. I, 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 I'm not kidding. No, no, I get I, it. I, I mean, I didn't know. Uh, no, I'm really not. Um, uh, like on the plane ride home to the DP, I literally, I literally, I'm not kidding. This is true. Chris made the amazing guy. I said, I sat him down. I said, Chris, explain. This is after the shoot. I said, like, Chris, <laughs> explain to me, explain to me what the different people do in the crew. <laughs> and he he wrote he's like there's this department i'm not kidding he wrote it on a fucking piece of paper he's like there's uh-huh. the lighting department there's the this that i didn't know i didn't i because re- i didn't know how the fuck was I, I i was i was i just didn't know but you know what i'm glad i didn't know because it, it, the the ignorance in a way and the naivety let's call it yes. the wonder yes it comes out in that thing. i couldn't make that thing today either no i can't and, and 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 also you know we were shooting the arctic i mean things were really fucked up on the production side that I had no idea about. Like yeah. at one point, you know, that job almost got canceled twice um, before, before we even left. Actually it did get canceled. Sorry. <laughs> the, after we went on a trip, yes. we did our scouting. We found all these amazing people. We found this town, me and Michael Haldane, the guy who produced it, who's, yep. who's you know, a very old friend of mine. Yep. Um, he's, he's the main reason I got the job. Yes. We went up there. We, we approached it like a documentary. We met all these people. I went around. I did my doc thing. I you know, met people at the, the, the store. Yep. I uh, you know, went to some events and we just we met people. We met amazing people. And we said, yeah, we're doing this thing. They were like, great, cool. Um, <laughs> friendliest people. You know, and it was a very multicultural town. I was shocked. There was like Nigerians up there. There was, there was people from... I know it was crazy because immigrants go up there because, you know, it's to, to, cleaners get paid 25, 30, 40 dollars an hour. Yeah. That's uh, and, tro- and Tropicana costs like $15. Um, <laughs> so, so, so we, we came back, we prepared this whole thing. We show it to them. Clients like, sorry, too expensive. Forget it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we, I remember we went for dinner. We were like, fuck. I was like, this was going to be my big break. What happened? <laughs> Uh, yeah, and so and then so it was over, and then the next day it was like actually it's back on, um, and so when that finished, welcome to advertising. I, exactly. So a bi- so the big thing the big thing for me wasn't when it came out and and I won and all that shit like that was amazing, but that for me I didn't go to Cannes. I, I you know I didn't I kind of stayed out of that. Yes. The big thing for me was when I came back yes. from that trip and yes. when it was more meant it was in my head because basically. I always thought I could do it, but you know, and always dreamed of doing something like that, but I wasn't sure I could do it. Yeah. And at that point, mentally, I said, I can, I do, can it. do it. Yeah. I have done it. I ha- and that was for me was a huge turning point. Yes. Because I I said I can be yeah. a director. I can be 
like anybody else, like some of these people I admire, I can be that. This is a step towards that. This was before I signed at Smuggler and all that, but it was like oh, mentally, yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it sort of, it, kind it, of like it clicked. And, and also I think, you know, proving it to, especially my mother, you know, uh, because she was, she was always the one who was a bit like, I don't know. And at this time, at this point I was like taking money from her and stuff, you know, she was supporting me. I had no money. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I didn't get paid a lot for that job, uh, yeah. but which is fine, but, but yeah. whatever. Um, and, and not in a bad way. It was just, you know, that's often how it is. Yes. And um, yeah. And, and, you know, I, it, that for me was like just a huge, huge turning point. And then, you know, but it was a personal that, that thing take right? off. It, it was it was a ter- personal turning point, which is which I think is more important in a way Absolutely, than all yeah. the external stuff. Yeah. The external stuff is important, obviously, and 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 it's exciting and all that shit. Um, but you know, it it it, it comes and goes, and one you know, he, I, I, at the time, of course, I, I got excited and very attached to that sort of stuff. Um, the, the thing that is interesting to me is that uh, YDA aside, because you actually you know, with that film, went to Cannes, it won Cannes, it won the YDA, it won everything, right? It was like, and as, as I said, it was, it was for the business, one of the films that actually, you, you were kind of like, oh my God, this is a whole new way, right? Um, yeah, not, that, yeah. not that it didn't exist, it was kind of advertising was coming into a new way, which then became typical language of branded content films and we didn't even know how to write branded content at the time, right? So it, 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 real stories with real people, but with cinematic look, but in documentary style, da, 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 right? But it was interesting to me, uh, it's interesting to me that uh, there is always one, one film, one moment in which not only you get validated to the world, in front of the world, right? But you get validated with yourself. Yes. I talked to another one of the directors uh, the, in one, a couple of chats ago, and he said, I went to Cannes, I had a spec spot, I was a producer that had done a spec spot as a director, I went to the YDA, I won the YDA, and in the last three days of Cannes, after I had g- given my business card for the first four days as a producer, for the last three days, I was talking to everybody as if I were a director. So I became a director in a matter of like, a few hours because it validated me as a director, right? So now I have a question because you actually mentioned about style and not wanting to do the same thing. And you are very clear about being a storyteller and everything that you talked about, the words that you used in even describing yourself in your life previous to being a director are very about a very storytelling. Okay. What kind of director do you want to be or are you? <clears throat> I mean, is there something that you've done as a director that you haven't done as a director, as a type of director that you want to do? You know, it's funny because <laughs> I, I know that when I did, a, the, the, did all that and, and it won and all that, but I only personally sort of feel like I've become a real director. Yes. Uh, like recently, yeah. like in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, in what, my head what do you mean what do you mean as a real like i guess i guess what i mean is i and it's it's a bit silly because obviously i made a bunch of films and 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 i i i did all that commercial but but i guess it, it's, it's not it's not silly by the way well for no. me it's 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 it is it's sort of like i have a vision i can i can play things out in my head now yes. i can then I understand all of the technical aspects, not everything, but I understand oh, the technical yeah. aspects of doing yeah. something. And, and then also, I think that I sort of understand the language in a slightly different way. So that, you know, mentally, in my mind, I can go, okay, I want to show this. I can go and kind of see it from the different angle. I yep. couldn't really do that before. Yep. Um, so it's experience? So it's, it's, it's experience. It's making a shit ton of mistakes, yes. right? It, yes. Because mistakes are hugely valuable. I, I, I had done that one commercial. I suddenly, I got signed to Smuggler. I was doing these huge jobs. Yes. And I, I was basically learning all, as, I, as I went. Um, it's also, um, I think, you know, how you are as a person. Yes. Right? I true. think that I Very had to true. grow up as a person um, yes. to, before I, I could, you know, understand that 
I have a specific role to play. um, And that, you know, what I say has weight and people are very fucking sensitive. And I, I, you know, sometimes I need to be careful and sometimes I need to say certain things. I have to be a father. I think being a father has made me a much better director. So actually, when I think about it, it kind of lines up, you know, my first child was born four years ago. And I think it pretty much lines up with that because you do have to be a father. I have two, yeah. And, and I think being a father, you know, seeing, so seeing, how, like, see, hearing myself talk to my kids, I go, oh, yeah. shit, this is how I need to talk to actors or whoever, <laughs> um, you know, because they're, everyone's sensitive to me, but I didn't sort of realize that, right, um, yeah. when I was younger, um, because I didn't come up through the sort of film, like, hierarchy, yeah. right? So yeah. I think that that has definitely informed me, and, and I think that, uh, that's been, you know, huge for me. Um, so, um, sorry, what what was your question again? I, I lost my, <laughs> I went off, I went, went off on a train of I was asking you, what kind of director do you oh, think? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So, right. So, you know, who the people I admire, I, I, I really admire somebody like uh, Soderbergh. Yep. You know, because. I'm not surprised. You know, when I w- watch a Soderbergh film, I, well, if, if you watch the Nick, yep. or if you watch, um, um, you know, even Ocean's Eleven, let's say, yes. you, you know, yes. it, okay, they're very different, but there's something similar about them. I mean, Absolutely. he he's, certainly when he's shooting, mm. he has a certain kind of feel. What the way he holds the camera and a lot of wide lenses. Even if you watch yes. Logan's Lucky, I mean, it's there's something there. All those movies are totally different, but yep. there's something you can go. That's Soderbergh. It's not as obvious as, say, Scorsese, which is basically the technique is the same. Yes. And, and a lot of times the structure is the same. And Scorsese is one of my favorite directors, but I, I admire somebody like Soderbergh. And then, you know, I would say Soderbergh's sort of uh, protege to some degree, Carrie, you know. Yes. So and, and I admire somebody like Carrie because it's sort of the same thing where yes. Carrie can do True Detective or James Bond and, and it's just, there's something there There, there's so there's it's also i think both of those directors are very interested in authenticity yes Um, that's that's why it doesn't surprise me because there's always a little bit of reality based storytelling right Uh, yeah uh, real stories or 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 authenticity within the story that they're telling even if it's oceans 11 you know um which is you know probably one of the best you know, uh, r- robbery stories in the in the world, right? Ever it, ever told. It, it, it is, yeah. And there's attention paid to the sort of reality of things, even just the reality of how people act. Yes. But also just, you know, also Soderbergh with his with his cutting, he often cuts. Well, I know for the Nick, he edits that like on the way back from set. But <laughs> he, he he doesn't. It's very economical. You know, like if you watch the first. Yes. Um, you know the, the beginning of um, um, the, the the what's it called the uh, the, the movie the, the outbreak movie uh, the contagion uh, contagion excuse me yeah. yeah it's it's just really you know um, it's you know Gwyneth Paltrow's like on the phone yes. and then you know it's just very tight and it's just yeah. it's you get everything you need and so I think that that kind of storytelling really appeals to me it's almost like even the editorial style is is quite clippy um, and and I. I appreciate that about commercials too, you know, about how you can... Is is scripted uh, your next uh, uh, world? Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. You know, I've been um, trying to be be a better writer for the last five, six years. I've done a lot of um, bad writing, (laughs) which, and and a lot of practice. And and Going into good writing from bad to good? I'm getting to be... I'm getting, it's getting better. Uh, I, and I think I'm getting to that point where actually uh, it, it starts to feel um, sort of viable. I made a short last year, which was, which was a huge, um, you know, a learning experience for me, which is kind of going to come out later this fall. Yes. And um, I, um, I also, um, you know, I, I published, well, it's like self-published in a way, like I, I wrote these posts about yeah. like a, a certain sort of uh, personal kind of story, yes. but that's quite dramatic, yes. kind of the story I was telling you before. So yeah. that, that story, I, I basically wrote a series of like nine Instagram posts, yes. which um, 
which <clears throat> tells that story of my family and their migration. It's called the, it's called the migrants. And right. so I'm turning that into a longer form nice. story now. Nice. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's bizarrely sort of prescient. Do, 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 you, um, like, do you like the fact that, the, that, I mean, even in the past 10 years uh, since you've been a director, do you feel like there's a, it's, it's easier to jump from one world to another? Do you think that they've gotten closer, that the, that the border has become more liquid, to use a word that a lot of people have used, which I don't really love, but that's fine? I mean, do, do you think it's easy to move from scripted to non-scripted, from branded content to non-branded, uh, commercial, 30-second commercials to um, uh, short film? Or do you think it's still very demarcated, it's like very clear? I, don't, I mean, I think it just comes down to what you've done and what you do. So, I mean, people just look at your work and they go, okay, well, you know, this guy can tell a story. So, yeah, you know, because um, if you look at sort of, if you look at how people make the jump, I mean, there's a few, there's a few ways. So one way is like, you're a huge, huge director and then you go and do a huge movie like Rupert Sanders. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, but you know, Rupert still had to like really push to get that yeah. first movie, and, oh, yeah. and really, they spent a lot of money in development, and yeah. like it wasn't easy, you know. Yeah. Um, and then there's you, you know, you do you do some shorts, and then you you try to you know off of that get some kind of assignment, or or you do something that's high profile, like a high profile video, yeah. and then off of that, or you actually write your own material, and then you're attached to it. Um, but I, it's, it's definitely hard to get, you know, film and TV people um, to sort of buy into you uh, yeah. if you've done a bunch of commercials. It, it does, even if, you know, you've done some good work, um, you, you, you need the best way, especially now. I mean, I think you need your own material. In my mind, that's the best way, at least for me yeah. um, and, and, and the kind of stories that I'm interested in. Yeah. You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily be interested in going, not that I could even get an assignment like this, but like, I wouldn't necessarily be even interested in going and just, you know, doing it like a, a, a studio movie as my yeah. first movie, for instance. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I would be, uh, um, you know, uh, I, it's just not who, yeah. who uh, I am. And, and so um, that's what, but I realized like I wasn't a good enough writer, but I had stories to tell so that I needed to sort of develop that more. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's, but I, I think it just comes down to like, I think what's cool now is there is more access. So for instance, like Netflix is putting out calls, just like send us scripts in Canada. They just put out this call, uh, you know, send, send us scripts. It's like, normally you can't do that. Yeah, you can't, yeah, yeah. You can't just send a script to Netflix. So I think there's this appetite for that kind of stuff. Um, there's, hunger, really there's, cool. hunger, there's hunger and, you know, Netflix has brought to binging and, and, you know, they finish yeah. content. And so when it finishes, they need more. And it kind of is interesting because, you know, we were in lockdown for a couple of months, you know, two or three months ago. And it felt funny because it felt like you were actually finishing Netflix, right? You were like, actually like, is it going to be over? You know, oh my God, no, need... no, it's true. And it's, it's true. And things are changing. So like, you know, I, I've been, I mentioned working on this TV series called Black Taj, which we've been in working on for 12, 13 years with another director, Matt Swanson. Maybe you, yeah. you know from, yeah. he's one of my best friends. Yes. And, right. and him, me and him and another um, writer. And, you know, it's about this Indian family who are kind of um, like uh, kind of gangsters, basically. Yes. And um, it, it's a family crime drama. Anyway, so, you know, the, it was niche before. It's not that kind of stuff isn't so niche anymore. No, it's not niche, no, you know, no, no, yeah. Never Have I Ever is like the number one show on Netflix. Absolutely. They want shows that play all over the place. And so that's really exciting to me because I am definitely interested in stories that reflect my experience. Absolutely. But it's taken me, it's, it, it's, I've also, you know, I've, I, I, I've been sort of uh, attracted to other kinds of stories as well. And, 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 but I realized, no, like I want to use my, my voice to tell that yeah. story and, and a story that we haven't quite seen before and, and tell a, a sort of second generation of, um, you know, migrant sort of stories. I think we had like a first generation of people like Mira Nair and Deepa Mehta, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but they, they had a sort of a different view on, on uh, pluralism and integration. And I, I don't necessarily want to t tell a story about um, ethnic identity and the struggles with that. That can be a little bit in, in it. Like in Never Have I Ever, right. it, it, 
she she does that too. It's not about that. It's a coming of age story. It's about a girl growing up, yeah. right? And that's a classic story about identity in its Absolutely. classic form. And that's way more interesting to me. And, and that's really what my story is about. But the, the other stuff is there, but it's just kind of part of the world. It's part of the setting. It's, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. sort of the meat of it. It's very interesting because but, it's true. Because the, new, the, the, the second generation will deal with it in a completely different way because it's it, the, the way you described yourself growing up and the way your family brought you up is actually very interesting because it's, it's the way you're describing what you want to say, right? It's like how you grew up actually is the type of story you want to tell because it's a family that actually brought up a Canadian kid and the Canadian kid happened to be with a Indian background, right? It's like, it's uh, uh, the, the background is not the story it's the kid. That is a story. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And the, the collision of, of different ideas Absolutely, that yeah. partly come from culture. Yeah. Um, so, for, so for instance, you know, the first generation, family you know they 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 they, they had a the very specific goal you know a, a lot of them i you know had this narrative of i came with 50 dollars yep. and you know it, it's it's yep. that drive right yep. and, and my parents had this ambition to succeed yep. no matter what but yep. it ended up sort of destroying them almost right yep. and and so uh, but then but then coming out of that so you know the immigrant story for me is about reinvention it's about yep. resilience right Re and that story we haven't seen. We haven't, you know, as much. It's like it's like Scarface, but that's only half the story. Yeah, that's you know, true. What happens in the, what happens in the second half? Yeah. So that to me is really interesting, and 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 I think that that's the story of the American dream that we all sort of buy into, but that is obviously uh, a myth, a myth in, in yeah, a way, yeah. and it isn't yeah, yeah. true for everybody. Yeah. And so I I think. Um, you know, the, the, that's, that's fascinating to me. And, and because bo being born in Canada, I do have a sense of entitlement, right? Oh, that my parents didn't have. I said, no, when people would ask me, you know, where are you from? I said, I'm from Canada. Then they'd be like, no, where are you really from? And I'd say, I'm from Canada. And then, no, 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 no. And then I would say, my parents are from blah, blah, blah. Um, and, it, you know, even if, even that's not simple. My dad's actually from Singapore, but he went, you know, his family's from, you know, it's, it's all mixed up. And, um, Hey, my so name it's, is it's, my name is Kareem Bartoletti. So I mean, when I yes, when I say exactly. when, when I say where are you from, it's like I'm Italian. It's like no, Kareem is not Italian. I was like, yeah, Kareem is from Tuscany. <laughs> you know, like uh, yeah, ex exactly, exactly. And and so I think people, you know, because brains are like we don't like like people are a bit, you know, they sort of like everything in their compartment. The way the human mind works, it sort of likes okay, to yeah, have yeah. compartments and things, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and so it's if you're if 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 what your senses say doesn't match with some existing idea you have, yeah. it's like, wait a minute, how, you know, what, yeah, what's it, going it on? Kind of goes into short circuit. Cognitive know? dissonance. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, Which Samir brings yeah. me to a, brings me to a question that I didn't ask because we kind of went, went in, in past it, but you didn't go to Cannes when you won the YDA, right? No. So, so did you feel from afar that something happened when, when, because that year you also won ten, right? You I won a gold line, and I was in the um, Sachi Sachi Director Showcase. Yeah, Sachi Sachi I probably should have gone. And <laughs> the YDA, and all three. I know. Of them, right at a certain point, you were like, boom! You were you were like nowhere, and then somewhere. Did you feel that I, there was a huge moment? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was. I really was. No, I mean, I'm not. I told I was living at home. I didn't. I didn't have because I I did this commercial. Yes. Right. And January. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. But I didn't totally get what it meant. Yes. And yes. then I, I started having conversations uh, and I had a conversation with one company and they were like, all right, you're cool. But they never sort of signed. Like, it was one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see what happens sort of shit. Yeah. And um, and then that happened. And of course, you know, there was a lot of attention and and you know, I, I mean, I, you know, Smuggler was sort of my dream place. Like awesome. I'd sort of go on the website and go, yeah. you know, imagine be... being a director on this place, you know, yeah. but I didn't know anything about commercials or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't. So yeah, there was a huge, huge change. Um, and where, where you know, I didn't go because the... I was like, Oh, what, why would I go? The, you know, and, 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 uh, I was kind of naive to obviously I, I think one of my companies, they wanted to like sign me 
globally and I was only signed in one territory. So they were like, yeah, you shouldn't go. Uh, <laughs> they were like, no, nah, it's not going to be very fun. Directors don't do that. That's what, they, that's what they're doing. It's not cool. Like, it's better to be a, an enigma. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm an enigma. Cool. And you're like, yeah, I'm going to um, stay here. I'm it's, like, it's better if they don't see you. That's what they, that's what they tell you, right? Oh, no, no, no. But obviously, they just wanted to like, you know. That's not uh, true. <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, I, so I, I know, I know, but that, but that, so now I know that. But, yeah. But anyway, so, so I, I didn't go, which was fine because I ended up sort of at my, at my place. And then, um, you know, I was in a situation where I was, you know, there was multiple people. So I, I had a pretty aggressive offer and yeah. uh, I signed and then I bought my mom a TV and then she was like, okay, cool. Okay. I, I, t- now you no, now you can be a director. Yeah, no, no, that, I, I had made three films, three documentaries, but I didn't make any money. Finally, when I made a bit of money, she was like, "Okay, cool. Now I believe you." Uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Did you, uh, did you sign immediately after Ken? I mean, sh- short shortly after. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, that played a huge role. Um, and uh, was it Smuggler? You know. Yeah. Yeah. I signed it. Yeah. I yeah. signed Smuggler, and yeah. uh, you know, I mean, look, it, it, it's it's those guys. I mean, they're incredibly uh, charming as well. You know? Yeah, they're uh, very charming. Yeah. I, so I know it, them it's, very. It's hard, well. You know, I know them yeah. well. It's very hard to say no. <laughs> if you, I mean, yeah, Brian. Brian is one of those people that you yeah, know, he is. Is just, You have one conversation with him, and it, it's hi, Brian. Not to, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it, it, that was, and that was amazing. You know, and yeah. that. Um, and after that, then, then life definitely changed because then I moved to New York, you know, yeah. I sort of said at what, because, you know, Canadians, we were all like, as soon as we, if we get, we were like, we want to move to the States, right. Growing up in Canada, that, that's, if you're an artist, right. Yeah, true, true. Uh, because that sort of validates you. And that means it, which is unfortunate actually. And I hope, I, I, I hope that sort of changes. And I think Drake has done a lot to sort of change that, True. right? Yeah. Because he, he, he has, I mean, he, he stayed in Toronto he's, and he's built this palace in Toronto. He's kind of, but, but you know, there was no Drake back then. And so, uh, <laughs> not that that would have mattered, but, 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 but I think that um, that's what, you know, I, I sort of, I said, I'm going to. There was no Drake States. back then should be a hashtag. <laughs> It's true. It was that long ago that there was no a world before pre Drake. Pre Drake. <laughs> um, so yeah, it 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 really it was an amazing thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and again, I guess it was a kind of a a validation and a a high, and also just um, you know, yeah, you you know, it's sort of like okay, I I I I believed in myself, yeah. but but there was part, and I have to thank my parents for basically, especially my father, who yeah. kind of over and over sort of told me, no, no, you can do this, da, da, da. But I was starting to not believe in myself. I was yeah. starting to look at, oh, maybe I should be doing something else because yeah. I, I, I wasn't making any money. Yes. And, and I wasn't, and I was, you know, making those phone calls. And luckily I, I was in a position to, to get help. But if I hadn't been that in that position, and, and you know, we're, we're learning about the effects of that now. If I hadn't, if I didn't have that support, you know, I may have given up earlier. Well, because it's, it's, it's a lot a lot about talent, obviously, but it's also a little bit about fate or luck, call it however you want. You know, I, I think luck plays a huge role, honestly. You know, it's I mean, huge. I mean, it's, huge it's, because it's huge. you bump into people and, and you have the luck of people that can sell you and the relationship between your producers and your directors is huge. And, you know, like it's, it's a bunch of other things. I mean, if somebody hadn't fought for you to win a documentary style Tropicana film and fought to actually have it not die a couple of times, and yeah. there and make it work, you would not have had that little uh, big moment, the little big moment that you had, right? So it's, it's interesting, I think, to me. It's, it, it's a lot about uh, luck and obviously the, uh, what you do with the luck through your talent. And I think this is kind of the perfect example of it, you know, um, because there is a demarcation not on when you decided to become a director, uh, as as my first question, or one of my first questions was, it's more like how you became a director through your talent, right? So, I mean, you said that that film would have never happened if it hadn't been for somebody that actually sold you against somebody that actually was probably a more commercial director 
than you were. Hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. And also the agency. So that's specifically Adam Bailey, who's still yeah. a good friend of mine, a creative. He, yeah. It was his vision for this project, and he really, I think, pushed that on their yeah. end of no, yeah. we need somebody. Yeah. And he was he's very much a visionary. Yes. And and I I think that um, that helps. That 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 was huge. So when you know when you sort of talk about well, this was one of the first there's a demarcation with this kind of thing. I think that was really his Absolutely. idea and yeah. his foresight, not yeah. because the, you know, it, I, that the vision belong belongs to him. To a large yeah. Extent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I, and I think, yeah, it, it, it's, it is luck. I, I would say one thing, which is just, you can't give up. So if, if you, yeah. if you don't give up, um, you, you, you get, a little bit lucky like yeah. you know and i learned resilience from my parents absolutely right uh after all the you use you use the word before eating. when you were you use the word before yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and 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 that's what i'm doing now i'm doing something similar but with writing where it's you know you read something and you're like this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you you just have to go okay start over and i'm, I'm going to try something else and just keep going and keep going that's great and 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 eventually it stops being shit, you know. Yeah. And it's 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 the same sort of thing. And 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 you kind of that's the one thing I think that okay, look, you you ha you ha you have talent, but a lot of times, you know, if you read like uh, what's it called, like Freakonomics or whether the Malcolm Gladwell on the yeah. books or whatever, you know, it's like the ten thousand hours thing. I mean, it's like the people who are actually successful, yeah. especially in creative stuff. Yeah. It, it it's not always the most talented people because when you're super, super talented, you know, you often have a sort of chip on your shoulder and maybe you don't want to work that much. True. But a lot, it's for the people who are, have some talent, but then they feel like they need to do better. Yes. Then they, those are the people that maybe practice more and try and try and try. Because ultimately you have to just get, get better you yeah. know, constantly. And, and you've got to be constantly trying to, you know, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, I, I, absolutely. I think that, that's kind of the, the thing. It's like you have to learn, you have to uh, take advantage, you have to know where to be, you have to be lucky, you have to, but you also have to kind of have a vision that you want to bring forward and you have to be lucky to bump into people that are courageous. It's such an incredible alchemy that it sometimes is like, you know, it's weird when you think back at it, you're like, holy moly, I can't believe that happened, you know, because... Yeah. The fact that you were there at the time when you were and you made what you did, which made you who you are, it's strange, right? So it's interesting. I think it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's part of it, you know? Um, so it's part of it you, is. actually. It's part of you and who you are today. So uh, again, Samir, I could talk for hours, but at a certain point, people will have gotten bored with us, the two of us talking. Uh, no, that's impossible. That's impossible. <laughs> you get a Kareem and a Samir I, together. You just... I mean, it's, it, there's no chance of that happening. <laughs> but so uh, I, yeah. I can't really thank you enough for for being. Thank you uh, so much. This. Uh, thank you very much for actually uh, being the last one. Actually, um, I, I'm, I'm I, honored. I, thank you. <laughs> It's really uh, and the Samir and the Kareem thing actually worked. Uh, I wish you all the luck in the world and all the love in the world and especially thank you so talent much. in the world for this. I know you're in thank France you. and you're actually working on a project. So, you know, uh, uh, au revoir, as you say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and yes. uh, again, good luck for everything. And, and again, thank you, thank Samir. You. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate the conversation. Thank, thank you, you very, very much.